Hi guys, this is Miss Gold. Today's lesson is Module 3, Lesson 2, Writing Sums as Products and Products as Sums. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students use an area rectangular array model and distributive property to write products as sums and sums as products. Students use the fact that opposite of a number is the same as multiplying by negative 1 to write the opposite of a sum in standard form. Students recognize that rewriting an expression in a different form can shed light on the problem and how the quantities in it are related. Students use an area model to write products as sums and sums as products. First thing I'd like you to do is to pause the video to complete the opening exercise and unpause the video when you're ready to continue. Take a minute to look over the opening exercise key. You'll see that the ratio of 3 to 4 is represented by 3 blocks for George and 4 blocks for Benjamin. And you know that the total of those 7 blocks is $56. So if each block is the same amount, then we could just simply take 56 divided by 7 and that gives us that one unit is $8. So from that we can figure out that George received $24. The key terms in this lesson are going to be distributive property. We've talked about the distributive property before. Today we're going to formally define it. The distributive property is where you have multiplication over addition, but you can also see it over subtraction. And here we're showing it over B plus C, but you can have more than two terms that you're distributing over. So we could have three, four, or five terms or more. The key idea with the distributive property is that the number on the outside gets distributed to everything on the inside. So A gets multiplied to B, and A also gets multiplied to C, which results in AB plus AC. For example one, it asks us to draw an array for three times X plus two, and essentially what this is is called the box method. So we are going to create a box where we're going to show X plus two as a length, and then repeat that three times to show the width of three. Here is a single x plus 2, so the width of this is x plus 2, but we need to have a length of 3, and right now we only have a width of 1. So we're going to repeat this two more times to create our length of 3. So what we're doing here is we are just going to combine like terms at this point. So we have x, x, and x. So when we combine those, we have three x's. And we combine two, two, and two gives us a total of six. And notice three x and six cannot be combined because they're not like terms. Example two says find an equivalent expression by modeling with a rectangular array and applying the distributive property for five times the sum of eight x and three. So again, we're going to start with our length of 8x and plus 3. So here is a single box that shows 8x plus 3. Because it's multiplied by 5, we need to create a length of 5 going this way. So we are going to duplicate each of those boxes. Here we can go through our array and now combine like terms. So we have 8x, 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 and 8x gives us a total of 40x's. And 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 gives us a total of 15. Notice again, 40x and 15 cannot be combined because they are not like terms. What I'd like you to notice from these two examples is if you look at the original elements that we're multiplying, we have 3 times x plus 2, and our result was 3x plus 6. So what you should have noticed here is that if you multiply the 3 times the x, you get 3x. And if you multiply 3 times 2, you get 6. And we see that same pattern happening in example 2. We are multiplying 5 times 8x plus 3, so 5 times 8x gives us 40x, and 5 times 3 gives us 15. So this really shows you why the distributive property works. Looking at example 3, it says rewrite the expression 6x plus 15 divided by 3 as a sum 
using the distributive property. In the beginning of the lesson, we talked about the distributive property in terms of multiplication, but we've learned in the past that we can always turn division into multiplication by multiplying by the reciprocal. So the first thing I'm going to do here is rewrite dividing by three as multiplying by the reciprocal, which means we're going to put this over one and flip it. So this would give us 6x plus 15 multiplied by the reciprocal, which is 1 third. And if you're not comfortable seeing it in this order, you can also use the commutative property to switch these two terms. And so we would have 1 third times 6x plus 15. So now you can see it's the distributive property. So we are going to distribute 1 third to the 6x and to the 15. So essentially what this is, is 6x divided by 3 plus 15 divided by 3. And you'll see it would have worked the same way if we had just left it as dividing by 3 because that's essentially what happens in the end. But that really just shows you that multiplying by the reciprocal is the same thing as well. So 6 divided by 3 gives us 2x and 15 divided by 3 gives us 5. Example four asks us to expand the expression. Now recall that when we first learned about multiplication in elementary school, we learned that multiplication is essentially repeated addition. So when they're asking us to expand this, they want us to turn the multiplication back into a repeated addition. So that would mean that I have four X plus Y plus Z's. So the first thing I'm gonna do is break this out into four of those. I'm gonna still keep them grouped together though. So x plus y plus c repeated four times. And this really just continues to verify our idea that the distributive property does work. Here, if you were to combine all of your like terms, all of your x's, we'd have four x's, four y's, and four z's. And so you can see if we just distributed the four to the x, the y, and the z, we would get the same result. So expanding is another way that you can simplify an expression without directly using the distributive property. Example five is going to ask us to actually work backwards and factor out the common term. What they're essentially saying here is to do the opposite of the distributive property. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by looking at the coefficients. I have a two in front of the X, a 12 in front of the Y, and we have a constant of eight. So what I'm really looking for here is a common factor between the three of these terms. And what I notice is two, 12, and eight are all divisible by two. So that would really tell me that what I'm going to be factoring out is a two. So I know I'm going to have two for a length in my box. I just have to figure out what is going to go inside of that box. So first of all, if we think about the X, if I have one X and one X, that would give me a total of two X's. If I had to break 12 Y into two pieces, that would have to be broken down into six Y and six Y. Eight, same thing, we're gonna break it up into two separate parts, so eight divided by two is going to give us four. So this shows us that the width is x plus six y plus four. So let's write this as the distributive property. So we have the two out in front, and the two is being multiplied to x, six y, and four, and we can double check our factoring work to make sure that we were factoring correctly by multiplying it back in. Two times x is two x, two times six y is 12 y, and two times four is eight. So factoring is another way to use the distributive property as well. Example six says to rewrite five a minus the difference of a and three b in standard form. Now when you're asked to write something in standard form, what they're really asking you to do is to simplify everything that can be simplified. So if there's distributive property, you're going to do that. If there are like terms, you're going to combine them. So we're gonna get in the habit of starting by looking for the distributive property. And here, it doesn't seem as apparent, but the hint should be that you have parentheses here. So this says minus 
this set of parentheses. Well, what I want you to start looking at it as is actually being multiplied by an invisible negative one. And really, when we multiply things by negative one, it's really just giving us the opposite sign. So if it's positive, it will become negative, and if it's negative, it will become positive. So let's start by distributing the negative one to the a and to the negative three b. Now notice, I included the negative with the three b, and you wanna get in that habit as well. Anything that's in front of it goes along with it. And we've talked about that before. The difference between negative and subtraction really is just a difference of having something in front of it. So if we focus on just this part of it, we can look at it as a negative. So distributing, notice nothing is being distributed to the 5a, so it's still just 5a. When I have a positive a multiplied by a negative one, I get negative a. And when I have negative one multiplied by a negative 3b, I get positive 3b. So the, we took care of the distributive property. The second thing I wanna take care of is any combining like terms. And we do have like terms here. We have five a's taking away one a. That would leave us with four a. There's nothing to combine our three b with, so we're just gonna drop that down. Now you'll notice, just always double check, a and b cannot be combined. So this is now in standard form and we're done.